Hello, welcome to the Radiological Emergency Response Training. This video is on the setup and operation of the Thermo Scientific Portal Monitor. The TPM903 Portal Monitor uses sensitive scintillation detectors mounted inside the two columns to detect very low levels of radioactivity. The detectors input their information into an instrument mounted on one of the columns. The instrument compares the background radiation levels to the radiation levels received as a person walks through the detector. If the levels are significantly different, an alarm sounds indicating that the person is contaminated. A proximity sensor mounted on the column next to the instrument detects when a person enters the portal. When a person is detected, the instrument switches from a background monitoring mode to account rate mode. As the individual leaves the portal, the instrument returns to the background monitoring mode. The portal is a go-no-go -go instrument. It cannot tell you where the contamination is located or how much contamination is present. If a person alarms the portal, they are then monitored using a handheld instrument that can identify the exact location and amount of the contamination. There are two models of portals used in Ohio the TPM-903A and the TPM-903B. The minor differences between the models will be identified in this video. The portal comes packed in a strong box that's designed to protect the equipment during transport to the monitoring location. The portal is easily assembled in any location that has a flat surface. To set up the portal, First, remove the two base plates and place them in the approximate location where the portal will be assembled. Remove the wing nuts and washers from the studs on the plates. Remove the left side column from the box. This is the column without the instrument attached. Place the column on the base plate. Ensure the yellow sticker is facing towards where the right column will be placed. Secure the column to the base plate with the washers and wing nuts. Remove the right side column from the box. Place the column on the base plate, ensuring the yellow sticker is facing the left column. Secure it to the base plate with the washers and wing nuts. Remove the two detector wires in the plastic bag. The wires for the TPM-903A are black with silver coaxial connections on the ends. The wires for the TPM-903B are colored, usually green and yellow, and have an Ethernet type connection on the ends. You will notice that one wire is longer than the other. Feed both wires through the hole in the elbow. The longer wire is fed to the other side of the cross base, side B, and the shorter wire is fed out the side A elbow. Position the cross piece over the columns, matching the correct sides. Connect the wires to the detector connectors at the top of each column. Then secure the brace to the two columns by pressing down. Connect the two wires hanging out of the hole in the elbow to the instrument. On the TPM-903A, the connections are on the top of the instrument. On the TPM-903B, the connections are on the bottom. Please note that the wires and the connections are marked. Ensure the A wire is connected to the A connector, and follow with the B wire to the B connector. You are now ready to power on the instrument. If you are using AC power, connect the AC adapter to the connector on the side of the instrument. Plug the adapter into a 110 volt outlet and turn on the instrument. If you are using battery power, ensure the AC adapter is removed from the connector on the side of the instrument. Remove the three battery covers and insert two D-cells into each of the three battery compartments. There's a drawing on the side of the instrument showing the correct battery replacement. Replace the battery covers and turn on the instrument using the switch on the side of the instrument. When you turn on the instrument, it will go through a startup self-check and then indicate on the display that it is counting background. At this point, you are ready to operationally check the portal. Have an individual walk slowly through the portal. 
As the person trips the proximity sensor, the display should change from ready to occupied. If this does not happen, you may have to adjust the proximity sensor. On the TPM903A, the plastic shield can be rotated to adjust when the sensor is tripped. On the TPM903B, the sensor is adjusted by loosening the set screws using a Phillips head screwdriver. The remainder of the operational check uses a small cesium check source found in the portal box. Holding the source at head level and mid-plane, have the person walk slowly through the portal. The portal should alarm as the person walks through. Next, holding the source at waist level and mid-plane, walk slowly through the portal. The portal should alarm as the person walks through. Repeat the test one more time, holding the source close to ankle level. Again, the portal should alarm as the person walks through. If any of these tests fail, the portal cannot be used until corrected. If all the operational checks passed, the portal is ready for use. When monitoring a large number of people, you must ensure that the waiting personnel are kept approximately 20 feet away from the portal. This is to allow the monitor to accurately determine the background between each count. If there is a buildup of background radiation levels in the area of the portal, it will alarm and cease counting until corrected. Your role in the Radiological Emergency Response Plan is an important one. This portal monitor is just one of the tools used to protect the health and safety of the public and our emergency workers. Thank you for your participation.